Johnny Johnstone. Hey, David D. Wright. Well, a lot of things here. I'm, I'm all right. You know, I got, I got to, I, things are not got to be hopping. You know, I'm coming up to New York uh, next week. I'll be there. Well, next week. Uh, but uh, I leave on the 9th from here. You know, I take the... Uh, I take the, uh, we'll talk about the knife. I leave on the eighth from here, arrive on the knife. Um, and I take the Amtrak up. So I'll be there for like three weeks and I'm trying to get out of Dodge and trying to get back to South Africa, hopefully. I know. So I'm going to book, I'm going to try to book a ticket tonight, but then, not, well, yeah, tonight. Um, and then uh, I'm going to. What doing? Then, uh, well, well, she's fine. She's there, she's there with her son, you know, she's. Right. So I'm, I'm not worried about them, you know, so. I know. So I'm, I'm cool. Well, anything happens, what could I do? You know? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, well, well yeah. life, you know, pandemic life. Life, hey. Life is what's happening. Yeah. So, look, so, well, the other thing is that, uh, you know, because I, I, I now I got to go on, not a diet, but, you know, I know what to do because I got to travel now. So I got to show up with, 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 with I'm less waste. The rest of my teeth taken out. Oh boy! I got an oral surgery tomorrow. Oh boy! I guess why I need to talk to you today. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Might not be able to talk for the next three weeks. Who knows? <laughs> Only kidding. Um, that's true. Anyway, uh, so that's it. I mean, you know, I'm just going to just cut, cut out. What, here's how you lose weight: just cut out all sugar. That's it. No matter what it is, potatoes, pasta, any any anything that has carbohydrate, just cut it out. Eat greens. And maybe some protein, but that's it. That's how you do it. That's, that's all. No sweets, no snacking, blah, 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 blah. So I'm right. a human experiment. Like I'm a human experiment with this COVID thing because, you know, I ain't take no shot. I, you know, I, I ain't take no shot either. And so, you know, I, I let them figure that stuff out. So anyway, uh, so that's not what we want to talk about. We, we need to talk. We need to you know when I talk to, when I call you, I'm usually talking theater, sometimes radio, but mainly theater. Uh, we had a, yeah. uh, uh, an, uh, we, uh, somebody has ascended to the ancestors. I don't know if I should talk first or you, but go ahead. But, but. Well, I put, BAI put Marsha on. She doesn't see it on BAI now. I'm sorry, who, who they put on? Marsha, Marsha Pendleton. Okay. <laughs> and she's a theater promoter. Okay. Well, so uh, she's on now Mondays, mm -hmm. which is good. I haven't listened to the show yet. I'm going to listen to this Monday. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's the first that's on the radio on BAI anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and I wasn't going to fight for that. <sighs> well, well, let's see how she does. And, that's right. Uh, well, we've got to, somebody's got to do something. <laughs> uh, well, they're, not, they're not doing that many radio dramas except for Cat Radio and, you know, and uh, what's the name? Mm -hmm. On a Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, what's the name comes on? What, you talking uh, David Rothenberg? You're not talking about uh -huh. David. Who are you not talking about David Rothenberg? He just... No, not Rothenberg. No, I'm talking about the other guy. The bearded guy. Oh, Max. Yeah, Max, Golden Age Radio. Max yeah, Max. yeah, Yeah, but that's, you know what I'm talking about. Look, when we, talk, when we talk radio drama, you know what we're talking, you know, so. Right. That's it. Those, they're in their I'm groove. I'm temporary shit. I ain't talking about old shit. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, but 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 uh, someone has ascended to the ancestry. Um, let's talk about that. We have to talk about that. You know, the last the last time someone ascended to the ancestry, we were together. At least, in the, <clears throat> which I missed this time. I guess I was in town. I could have did it if 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 this happened. If it was a regular funeral because remember we did the thing on Barbara Ann Tier, and that was uh, that was a Charles Weldon. You know, so like that. So anyway, I'm just saying we did we we did a we, we did a um, a radio program on Barbara and Tia, and they did the whole thing. I'm just trying to say yeah, we, we did that. We did the same with Barbara and Tia. That's right. Now we 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 should um, and by all accounts, you know, Douglas Turner Ward deserved the same. But it's a day of COVID. How can we how can we do this? You well, know? he was the one. You know, he was the one. Well, you want to? I, I guess I should go first because I guess I, I sort of weirdly knew him first. I worked right. with him for work with him first. Um, you, uh, you'll find this any place. Now, what happened was this was we're talking about the mid '60s now, and uh, he wrote an op-ed. Uh, somebody else, Bob Antier, wrote an op-ed for for New York Times one time too. He wrote an op-ed basically talking about the state of black theater in the '60s, and, and you know, saying, "Hey, what's going on?" Uh, right. I'm making it short, but some cat well, he from, did one too. Yeah, Woody did one too. Yeah, that was the time when they were writing. You know, they were they were getting in the yeah. and getting some response. 
Anyway, this guy well, from the... From well, the not only were they writing, they were also writing to the, to the op-eds of the papers. Yeah, that's what I'm trying you to say. Know? That's what I'm saying. That that's the, that may, Let me do this story here. So... So what happened? Some cat from uh, from Ford Foundation, you know, of course that's that's who reads the paper right. record. Those people like that, and said, "Hey, maybe they got a point." So basically, approached uh, I guess approached uh, Douglas Turner Award at the time, right about the same time. That's when they were doing a Genet play. You know, they were doing a, you know a, right. a, uh, that whole sock kind of thing. Um, and then you had the extraordinary people. Then they all were together. Bob Rantier, uh, uh, Woody Robert, Robert Hooks, Robert Hooks. Um, all, all, all kinds, all kinds of people, uh, and so what, what happens? They say, well, they gave him some money, <laughs> they gave him a grant to start right. basically to start the Negro Ensemble Company. Now, right. Negro Ensemble Company was well, basically you have uh, Douglas Turner Award, you had Robert Hooks. One was the artistic director, and one was something else. And then, of course, you had Gerald S. Crone, who was the the money guy, the money guy, right? The, the white guy. In fact, it was interesting because, because he was the money guy for uh, uh, Douglas's plays. Right, but this he was, this, man, he was actually managing him, you know, managing his his career. Mm. Well, to tell and you, the play right and actor. No, no, you have to remember. Uh, we just we mentioned. Um, uh, well, um, Douglas Turner Wood, but we mentioned. Just, we mentioned somebody, uh, Barbara and T, and all the rest of them people. Okay, you're coming in broken though. I can't get really. You're coming really muffled. Sorry, that's probably me okay. mumbling. Um, uh, but we we we, uh, we mentioned these folks, but. What really happened would not what really happened, but they were all together at the Negro Summer Con. Gerald S. Crone, we, uh, we mentioned David Rothenberg. Well, I mentioned David Rothenberg, but little known that Gerald S. Gerald Crone's office was right ne- down the hall from, from David Rothenberg. So David knew him. You know? okay. And uh, uh, because he was handling basically the managing and stuff like that. Whereas the, the Negro Ensemble Company, which was started by those three folks, Right. It was down at St. Mark's Place, down there on 2nd right. S- Avenue. Where we, where we were last, where they had the last play I did there. Oh, okay. Um, which is, well, 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 yeah, before they closed down, because they when they became Kim's video, and then I don't know what they're doing now. So, uh, anyway, so so that theater, was, so that was, that's what was happening. Uh, they got this grant, they started the company, uh, and, and at the same time, other stuff was happening. Um, but I came across the Negro Ensemble Company, very, the, they had a, a, what's called it, the, I guess, the company, the company, and then they had an acting class, and the company... Right. Uh, the company, the resident company, had had you know people like like uh, 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 Denise Nichols and and uh, and and Rosalind Cash and and Norman Bush, all kind of uh, uh, Arthur French. That's where I first met Arthur and worked with Arthur. All all these folks. Um, he said, "Well, how would you meet all these people? Wait a second, you, you must be young." Yes, I was seventeen years old. <laughs> and Ron Mack, right. Ron Mack, uh, I wrote a letter to him. Somebody told me, my fraternity brother Charles Green told me about the thing. He said, you know, you'd be good at this. You should write them a letter and try to get in the company. I said, so I wrote them. Are you still, what, why are you underwater somewhere? Where are you? I have no idea. Maybe it's because I'm speaking through a speaker. Um, well, la, 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 I can hear you clearly. Um, so let me say this. Uh, so, so what happened was was basically, I, and to make a long story short, shorter, um, basically I end up, uh, happening was that I was um, because we had acting classes. You know, we all were in class. I was in an intermediate acting class, and we right. all took all kinds. Because con- you told me Richard Roundtree was in that class. R- Richard Roundtree first started in our class, but he was already tagged for Shaft, and, right. they, were, they, were, and they, they they bumped him up. That's because he was already a model. That's right. He was the the Duke model. The Duke model, right? But um, but what happened is they bumped him up to 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 the resident. Well, I guess the, the advanced acting class or whatever it was before us. Uh, but he was there for a very short period of time because they already tagged him. To, 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 right. to be Shaft. So he was only here for a second, which is why you see, you know, well, anyway, so 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 that's what happened. Um, meanwhile, um, uh, well, I came into the, to the company because I was in intimate acting class. Their first play they ever did was, a, was to me, it's still the finest play ever that they ever did was uh, called, a uh, uh, play called Song of the Lusitanian Bogey. Right. And it was, right. Song of the Lusitanian Bogey. And, right. uh, um, and that was uh, directed by Michael Schultz, and you right. know, you know Michael Schultz. Every people know from from Carl Washington stuff. But he was a right, fine. Right, right. He was like maybe the best. He did after that. He did God as a guest. We do all kinds of stuff. Michael the theater. Michael was a theater person. Unfortunately, you know they got the suck, sucked up with Hollywood or whatever. 
So anyway, yeah, I talked to Hollywood a bunch of them did. I, I asked I asked him once I asked Doug one time uh, you know about less than ten years ago I said well how come you know what what happened and he said he told me he said look he originally wanted Michael to take over as artistic director for Negro Ensemble Company right but, um, and but but Michael you know well Michael wanted to do to do whatever but interestingly enough the the first play that that Doug uh, directed for Negro Ensemble Company was Daddy Goodness. And that, right. was, that was the end of the first season. Yeah, the first official season. And uh, I have because because all the all the kids I'm going kids we all like young. Well, I would no, I me and this other guy were the youngest people. Everybody else was sort of a little bit older. Uh, they, we had a, they had us doing all kinds. You know, we, we built the sets. We were learning theater and I like that. And so for Daddy Goodness, I actually uh, they they tagged me because I was hanging lights. They tagged me to basically be the, the lighting technician. Yeah. Right. So I was a lighting technician for Daddy Goodness, which is a play that that uh, Richard Wright adapted from this French guy, and and to me it was a great play. Oh, it's an amazing play. Um, anyway, uh, and so that's how I know. So Doug, that was the first piece that Doug directed. So I was there with, for Doug's first directorial thing, if you want to say it that way. Um, and it was it was it was a great production. And then he went on from there to the ceremonies and next year it was ceremonies of Darko Man. It's a bunch of other stuff that's really, really good. Bunch the, other stuff, right. the first few, the River Nights, all those first few plays were really great. The first three seasons were wonderful. Anyway, um so that's how I know um that's how I met or know know about Doug's work. So anyway, um uh, let me move on from there just real quick. When when I first came, when I came to BAI and you asked me what I wanted to do, I said I want to do theater, you know, on um, theater, on, theater, on radio, radio, radio. theater on radio. Theater on radio. And, um, and so it took me a while, but the first time we did actually did some was in the eighties. There was that I remember it. Uh, you know that that what's that guy that uh, that Sharpton guy? He had called for a day of absence. There was some something happened. You know in right. New York, and I immediately because I had been working with I had been working with Creative Unity by then. We had just did a, a couple of things. I think uh, just a couple of maybe one thing. Yeah, we did one thing. And and so I had this idea. Hey, we should do day of absence because it was in the middle. Of the, we wanted to do it in the middle of the day. I know the piece was only less than an hour, so I could just take right. some time. So we was going to do it in the middle of the day, which is uh, which is fine, you know. Uh, right. So, but what's what was different is that because I come from a theater background, and I, I and I, I knew the station because I the time when I first came about eighty two to this was done, done about eighty seven, eighty eight, whenever it was. And in that time period, I just took spent the time to learn the station and then know all the people in the station, all the rest of that stuff. So in the middle of the day, basically, I I I I walled, not wall, I I um, made sure people couldn't come through a certain uh, a certain area of the station. So I used the main control room. I used uh, what's what we call well, edit B. Well, edit B was a thing where uh, studio A, the main control room. Edits, edit C. We call it meat locker. And believe yeah, it or not, locker. and and believe it or not, I use the uh, air conditioning room. Right. Wow. Now, how? You know, because because there's a scene in, in Dave Absence where the, the telephone operators are doing their thing. So I just use that as ambiance, and we still had sound effects, or whatever. But it was very effective. Somebody has a, a copy of that man. It was an amazing piece. And um, what was interesting is that when I was when I was working, when I was adapting it. I didn't want to change any words. The only thing right. I changed in the whole thing was that the Rasta's character, because remember when Doug wrote it, he wrote it as a step and fetch a character. Right. Okay. So the only thing I changed in the play was that instead of step, instead of the a character affecting a step and fetch it kind of thing, because we, now we're talking about the eighties. I basically said to myself, "Well, who's the who's the most you know notable comedian now?" And it was happened to be uh, Eddie Murphy. So, right. so Yusef, who plays who, who's in the piece, he could affect an Eddie Murphy, you know, voice. So that's right. in that one scene, you have Yusef sound like Eddie Murphy. It was incredible, you know. And wow. I did some other little trick things, but anyway, the, the, so, so I did that as a, uh, I did that interesting enough. If that's my first piece, it was I guess it's interesting because my first professional theater was Daddy Goodness, and my first uh, audio drama, if you want to put it, live audio drama on radio, was. Day of, Day of absence. So I guess it sort of comes all, all around like that. Anyway, so yeah. so what's what's your recollection of? Uh, I mean, that's my experience with with Doug, and there was other stuff throughout the years, but small stuff. Um, okay. Wh wh how did you so, come about? Because you're a little bit. Uh, after how that. I met Doug actually was when I was was 15. It was 1967. Mm -hmm. I was 15, 
And that summer, I called, we had you know, Project Double Discovery, the Upper Bound program, and they took us all down to the theater, the Mark's Playhouse. And we saw Day of Absence and Happy Ending. Yes. So that's where I met, we met Doug down there. Oh, so you, actually, I, you actually saw him sooner because um, the Negro uh, Ensemble Company didn't start till after those two till those two things. And I finished, right. until 60. Okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. So then I didn't see again until, I didn't see him again until 1997. Hmm. But he wasn't at NEC anymore. It was Susan Watson Turner. Hmm. And Susan, I guess they had, you know, they had the board voted him out or something. But I met Susan, my discuss the next, the first time I ever worked with them was with Susan Watson Turner and Kim Tooks. Because our play was up. And uh, I, they got me to sound design her play. And that's how I, you know, I, got, I got back to NEC. Mm-hmm. I didn't see Doug again until what, it was 2012 or something like that. Mm-hmm. When I, and no, it was no, it was later than that. It was 220, it was when, it was when 218, 217, 218. And I was working with NEC again with um, another show. And Doug came to see the show because I never, as much as I had designed for them, I never saw Doug. Mm-hmm. Once uh, Charles took over, you know, I was there, you know, when Charles, when Charles took over, uh, Karen Brown, she was the, the director, executive, she was the one that invited me to come do the sound for these plays that they were doing. Mm-hmm. But on that, by that time, they were on a decline. Yeah. So I didn't see Doug again until, until that play. And then at the 50th anniversary, I saw him at a. Uh, at the St. Mark's Theater down there on, on um, well, um, yeah, whatever street that is, mm-hmm. and, uh, which will never be East 4th Street, but uh, oh, East Street. But when I saw him, that you know they were giving him an award. He was putting his uh, his his foot and his handprint down in the cement. Oh, where is that at? That's down on on uh, West A Street. Oh, is it what's uh, the playhouse? We don't have St. Mark's Playhouse. There. Oh, that's the 7th Street, yeah. Yeah, over there. That's where... Um, Second Avenue? Yeah, really? they have uh, his fingerprint, I mean, his handprint and his footprint. Outside of St. Mark's piece, piece right there? Oh, yeah. yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah I, I gotta go and check... Out, I don't know if they put it inside or it was outside, because he had to redo it. Oh, I gotta, I gotta go and check that out. Maybe I should take yeah. a picture, put it yeah. up on Instagram or whatever. Okay. All so right. He's, that's, that's the next time I saw him. Mm. Um, and then he could barely talk because he had they cut off half his tongue. Mm. Uh, he had cancer and they mm. cut off half his tongue. So, uh, mm. and because Joyce, my cyber wife, was driving him around mm. and actually taking him every place, mm. that's really how you know how I got to really to talk to, talk to him at all mm. at any point because I had a picture of me and him. Mm. Mm. That's kind of weird because we both somebody took it. And it was, both our eyes were wide fucking open, like like mm. something's wrong with it, like somebody shocked us or something. Mm. So, uh, but he was very interesting to me because when I, I spoke to Barbara about him, because like you told me, you know that Barbara had married Godfrey Cambridge. <laughs> yeah, because that whole, that whole clique was together, what destroyed them. And just not, I'm talking out of turn, this is what happened. What really did not destroy them. What happened was basically uh, Robert Hooks, Bobby, we call him Bobby Hooks. Robert Hooks was going out with, with Barbara Antier. And then right. Denise Nichols came on the scene and he dumped Barbara Antier. Barbara got pissed or whatever. And she went uptown and basically, you know, if you want to say this, started a na- na- uh, National Black Theater. Now, right. At the time, at the time, remember, you had, you had, you had um, the, I think National Black Theater was a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit after that, but still on the scene. But, you know, you had a New Heritage a Theater you know, and you had Negro Ensemble Company and, and the National Back there, and people thought we were in competition, but well, all us, you know, all, all us, we would go see each other's plays, no matter, you know, right, right. <laughs> and these all these little playhouses and stuff like that, you know. So it was, it was, it's like it was a good time for theater people, you know, on 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 a certain level. And, and on a certain level, it was a good time, and people were willing to volunteer and do stuff, and because it was definitely there was money, but no money. Well, the economy was different too. You could afford to do that. Right. I mean, what, you, 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 like I told him, we can't afford to do that anymore. I mean, one, uh, of, one of the things, that the, the, the rent was so cheap down there. I remember one time uh, and when we were working on Kungi's Harvest. Yeah, it was Kungi's right. Harvest. And um, 
And, and um, somehow Buddy Butler, who was, who was doing lighting and stuff like that, I think he was doing lighting sets or whatever for Kongi's Harvest. So he, um, uh, we was over at his house on the Lower East Side, you know, one of those places where you just have the, right. you have the room and just some pillows thrown about, you know, that kind of thing. But it was, right. of course, cheap to live there. So everybody lived down in the area. So you can visit each other late at night and rehearse My or whatever. My brother lived there on, on, the, on First Avenue between uh, 9th and 10th hmm. up until, shit, it was what, 2005? Hmm. Murphy, you know Murphy, my god brother Murphy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's where he lived. I mean, he lived there up to 2005, then he went to Pennsylvania. Then he went up to up to uh, um, that place up in Canada where the mother black people were. He was in the island over there because his girlfriend on the island. <laughs> <laughs> up there. Hey, off, the, off, you know, off the coast. Yeah, off he, the you know, east coast. And I'm like, but then he came back to Pennsylvania where he passed away. Yeah. Oh, a few years ago. You know, but the one thing I would say about not one, there's a lot of things we can spell. And he was paying sixty-seven dollars a month rent. Yeah, there you are. Well, I mean, it's like, uh, but the thing about uh, Doug, I want to get back to Doug, is that you know, for me, he was a force. He actually, yeah, well, he he, if he you want to talk to about a with. force, when you talk about black men, where he was actually a force, not just physically, whatever. I mean, happened. But yeah, but, uh, but he culturally, would, culturally, he was a force, yeah, and he wouldn't compromise. That's the other thing; he just didn't compromise. Right? He was. He was about. Like, and Joyce said that to me. She said, "Well, like, Joyce was talking about him. He said he's about the excellence." I'm like, I got that. I got, and that's why he wouldn't come to a lot of stuff that was going on at NEC mm. after he left. Mm. You know, when Charles took over, because Karen is a producer, but she's not, you know, it ain't about the excellence. She, she'll settle for stuff, but I'm like, I wouldn't be settling. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I would not settle for, 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 for BS because people need to be on their job. When you're doing this thing called theater, you need to be on your job, especially black theater, because when the white folks come, when they do come, you need to look, you need to look better than them. Yeah. Well, the, you need to look, and, but because it, it's still the same situation, you got to be twice as good as they are. Yeah. So you can't be doing that shit. And look like like you doing some high school kind of play. Well, look, don't we owe something to the whole tradition? Here's my thing. I'm into this thing right now. I've been, I've been thinking a whole lot lately since COVID. You know, I ain't going no place. I'm just in my head a lot and reading and stuff like that. I don't even watch much of anything on 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 the Netflix and nothing like that. But you know, anyway, one of the things. Is that I have this thing now? I don't want to boycott things. I say we we should withdraw. I want to use that word withdraw. But you say we're going to withdraw. We're going to withdraw to ourselves. The, the, the way things are, so much. If we need to stop changing all this, chasing all this money and stuff like that, and find ways. I said we need to, do we the race. need to stop being beholden to these people. Exactly. That's my point, and and I keep saying that. You know. I don't want to be. I don't want to depend on nobody give me no money for no grant. There's enough people in this community, in this black community as a whole, that we should be able to produce ourselves without worrying about them. When they want to come by and visit, fine. They want to donate something, fine. But we should not be fucking relying on these people. Well, you know what it's like to me. If you want to look at a, a product at a type, it's you, sharecropping. That's what it is. <laughs> well, we want to look at a, a close type, even though it's still owned by some. Is that I look at Soul Train. You know the, the 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 TV program. You know, oh, yeah. When, when, he ripped up a new asshole. Yeah, but when Soul Train, ain't nobody knew it was only black people was watching. But then Soul Train, like just like when hip hop first got, when you had MTV and MTV, your MTV raps, what people they don't realize is that black people do they supposed to do their thing uncompromisingly. What happens is white people try to look what's what they doing, what they doing. So they're always gonna come, no matter what. You don't have yeah, to come. That's, that's right. They're gonna come no matter. Right. They're gonna come anyway. So I, I I'm starting to call this the bah- the, the Obama syndrome. What happens? You come and you say. Let let me compromise with them so that I can get what I want, want first before you know. The, the, before you, in other words, you 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 you're already compromising when you come to the, to the thing. You're not coming getting them pure, and that's the that's the problem I have with a lot of folks that happen today. They think they have to think about you know what what the white person going people paying my bill. Well, it shouldn't happen that way. That's all I need to know. But that's that's part of my work in in Africa, in South Africa. I mean, uh, one of the reasons I got to get back because, you know, I daily miss doing audio drama. I got to do something, you know. I got to do right. something. So anyway, they got something set up for me for three months. I'll be Hopefully I can, we can get this stuff up. But what's interesting, what I want to do is, is you create a situation in other places where, where, where um, uh, black people, if they want to, can buy into that. 
It doesn't happen no matter where it is. I, I, I'm not telling everybody to come to the Eastern Cape of South Africa. Nobody comes there. But that's who I'm working with, with those kids. But that same thing, I can duplicate other places. One of the things I want to do is is is, is in, even in the states there's a there's a piece I want to do but I need I need to travel around but I want to have to do it in such a way where I don't have to uh, spend any money I don't want anybody to sponsor me I can't explain this but I want to do a way where I have not beholden to anybody so that that so, so that's right, the whole thing right. but I'm saying we can do what we need to do any place on the planet and just feed into stuff. And that's that's, what, that's that's what we're missing these days, you know. That's what people are not getting. They still want to make their bones in the United States, not knowing that the United States is not being taken over. I mean, you know, all these immigrant groups, everybody's coming and doing their little thing and ripping us, trying to rip us off. Well, you know, we need to withdraw into ourselves. Don't allow these folks into our into what we're doing. Do our thing. When and when they look at it and they want make them pay, <laughs> that's how you right. get it on the back end. That's all I can, That's the only way I can put it. You know. But you're right. You're right. Yeah. You know? Because that's what I was saying. That's what Karen Cal- was, Cal- was trying to do that with her play. Mm. When she put her play up down in St. Mark's, um, it ran like three days before the COVID hit, and they put everything now. Mm. But they want, then they wanted to shoot it. So I'm like, if you want to shoot it for my sound, you got to give me five grand, a minimum. Mm. Mm. Because that's what the industry standard is. Mm. You know, so my contribution, five grand, mm. and residuals. Mm. And I told, I told, that's what, that's what I, I gave a shit. I went to the union for that. Mm. With their pair of sound designers, you know, for because it's, you know it's a lifetime thing. That shit is gone. Yep. And uh, she was trying to get that for all of the designers, and you know herself as an actress. And uh, it was they they, 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 they wouldn't get they wanted to do it on the back end. I'm like, well, they, we're on the back end right now. Because the show went up already. You need to shoot the show as it is. Mm. And if you're going to shoot it like that, then you need to fucking pay me. Well, it's you know it's almost like when they took when they took this whole uh, Hamilton thing to uh, Disney and they didn't want Disney, they, right. and they didn't want to pay them. You know like, what, what are you talking about? You know, right? But that's the thing. Here's my question. I, let me I, let me ask you a question there. Yeah. Here's the thing. We talked we talk about Bob Rantier. We we we, we, talk, we talk about Willie <laughs> King and Douglas Turner Ward and you know, a bunch of other people. Yeah. Um, and back then we did our thing. Who's who is doing the thing like that? That's in the I want to say in the community. That's not beholden. Remember, Negro Summer Company is still beholden to you know the the, the structure, if you want to put it that way. Uh, but, but anyway, who, who is on the scene now that that you can see any place in the United States that uh, that has that power, that has that sensibility? I should say. I would say I don't know. Uh, well, I can say the closest I can see that in New York is Boza. Boza, ah, oh, yeah, of course. Boza, Boza, Boza is really, Boza. he's a force to be reckoned. He's a boss, really. And then, there, there you go. That's and, he, right. and he keeps it uptown, too. He doesn't, he doesn't bring it downtown. He keeps it all uptown, which is good. Mm. Uh, like Barbara did. That's why Barbara went uptown. That's why Barbara mm. left, any, left NEC, because she said, and she said, uh, "That's my me talking to her." And and she says that publicly. Like, look, these people want to be in Midtown. Ain't none of us in Midtown, and none of us can afford them tickets down there. Mm-hmm. You know. So I'm going up town where the people are, and that's how she started out the Black Theater. And yeah, she was. It was rebellious, and it was like a cult, and all of that. But at the same time, I can appreciate her for what she did and what she did for me. And it was you know, supported. It was months. supported. More importantly, it was supported. That's the whole thing, right? You know, so uh, that that was all good. The, the the other thing I want to say, well, Vos is interesting because he has connections to South Africa, you know, so right. so, so he can do do the pendulum. But I'm not, not I'm just saying South Africa, but any place in the world, we should be able to. Because remember, one of the first things he's going to talk about. He's got connections with Japan too. Again, there's people that have connections all over the world, and no, you can get your money someplace else and still do your little project here, develop your little project wherever, and then move, and then move on from there. I mean, and, and I look at places like you know Nigeria is coming up. All these people coming up with little theater. Well, there's people that we can go back and forth. I'm leaving England out of this, but you know, rather than than, than bitch and moan about this or that, we should just be using the make it global because if everybody wants what what Black Americans, you know, ADOS is, then they got to come to us anyway. 
Right. So we might as well be state in our purity and not try to do do these other things. You know, I don't want to see another adaptation of black adaptation of some sort of Shakespearean thing or whatever the heck it is. You know what I mean? Right. We that's got, what Deborah Ann was doing. I'm like, we got too many. You know, I'm like, you know, I mean, that's fine. But every every actor is designed to be a Shakespearean actor, okay? Because that's, that's that's Shakespeare's thing. That's their thing, and they need to hold on to that. Yeah, but I'm saying that they they do adaptations. You know, if I see another, you know, Romeo and Juliet, I'm gonna barf. You know what I mean? Those yeah, kind of yeah. things. You know what I mean? We have too many stories. If I see another, wait a minute, if I see another female, all, all female as well, I'm a barf. Oh, oh, oh. you know, I did I know. that. I did that one. Up, you know, and uh, but. The only thing I mean it does for me it just gives me it just gives me props, you know, mm. and the sound thing. But I'm like, we need to do our own shit. There's a number of us got, and see, most of the young people, the young writers, have gone to to film because yeah. it's cheaper to shoot now. Yep, yep. It's cheaper to shoot. It's cheaper to shoot than put, put those agents. I mean, I got I know three guys that have sold this shit to Netflix already. Mm. And it's on Netflix, and some got it on Prime, or you know Amazon Prime. Some, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. They're getting paid because yeah. now all these streaming services need content. Yeah, but you see, you you, you could do stuff, and, and and you have to do what you have. Okay, I, I directed this pro this show in um this this, this theater piece in um in in India, right? And right. And, and and because of the circumstance, I knew that I couldn't use certain things, so I made it a costume drama. It was right. wonderful. It was great because they had costumes. That's what they had costumes all over. They have to pay for any costume. They can make them whatever it is. But that's what they could do. You know, I'm not trying to say we right. have to do what we can do. We can't keep on. You know, my, my famous thing is saying, like, man, if I did an audio drama and I had to film it, I would do it just like uh, Mandalay, like, like Lars Rantier when he did the Dogma series, that, that kind of thing. You, there's things you can do to make it super interesting. <laughs> And then that's your germ. You get paid for that and let them take it and do what they want with it. Like being a writer. Oh, I wrote this. And then they're going to they're gonna mess it up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you, you paid me. I'm getting my residuals. You go ahead. Do what you want with this. That kind of, that's what we have to do because we can't do anything else. There's no way we can compete, you know, with some Broadway show. We have to become those Broadway people and do all those messed up things that you did with those relationships. Our problem is right. that, our problem is that, we 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 are depending on too many relationships with 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 with, um, with white folks that are perceived as 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 a um, uh, authority authority whatever it is when when they're not they're they they're, they're skeevers they they're, they're pariahs they 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 just take they they take and just move things around ah you don't need to do that. You know, so we'll see what happens. Any yes. else? Anything else on Doug? I just wanted to note note Doug's passing. You know, peace and blessings on his eternal creative soul, and hopefully, you know, well he'll, he'll live as long as you keep on doing his pieces. You know, Dave Apps is a classic piece. You know, right. that that should be done. <laughs> I guess somebody as a film or whatever have you. That would be great. Anyway. Oh hell yeah. So. Hell yeah. So those kind of things, but we'll we'll see what happens. So anything else? David D. Wright. No, not really. Okay, man. Not right. really. I'm just working on my shit. Yeah. You know, trying to get my shit done. Yeah. Well, look. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, yeah, be, be be well. You know, hope. Uh, you know, the the, the whole denture thing is going to go well for you. you know, I'm gonna uh, be good, Anthony. Hmm? I'm gonna be well. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to keep it moving. I hear you. All right, man. No I, you're supposed to. Yeah, I'll see you in a couple of weeks when I get up here. I'll see you or talk to you or something like All that. All right, man. Good enough. All right. Take care, man. Right. Thank you. Later. Thanks. Okay.